Hello, this is Derek from Inflatable Sup Authority. And today we're going to be doing a complete on water comparison with the Bot Easy Rider and the Bot Low Rider. So we'll be comparing them in kayak formation as well as in paddleboard formation. And we will be showing some of the stats with each in terms of maneuverability, tracking, feel, etc. So my initial impressions, paddling the Bot Easy Rider, this is by the way the Bot Easy Rider, Easy Rider, is that in kayak formation, it feels a lot higher up compared to if you had any of the Amazon seats, etc. The seat on both these boards is way more comfortable than really anything, any other sort of kayak seat I've sat in, to be honest. A big part of that is because my legs are uplifted. Thanks to the seat, there's a little bit of an incline. So that is really nice as it takes the pressure off your back. We're just gonna play around with this board a little bit here. Um, we're just gonna see how many, about how many strokes a side it is. This board I find definitely does wag side to side a little more than other boards. But I think that's also because the seat is towards the back. So a lot of the weight is not centered. It's just a bit more off center towards the back. So let's do some tracking. So let's just see how many strokes aside. We'll just aim for the ramp over there. One, two, three. Yeah, so that was the reading. It's like last time, let's try it again. One, two, three. Yeah, about well, three strokes aside for the Easy Rider and Kayak Formation. Let's see how many for a 360. One, Two, three, it's about three in a bit. Now this thing, as soon as you dip the paddle in the water to do that, it just, it responds instantly. Like you can see if you pick up a little bit of speed here, and you just dip a paddle in, just like that. And it almost does halfway just with that one paddle stroke. So definitely a lot more of a maneuverable sort of board and that's because of its wider width. Like the board is pretty wide. So at 36 inches length, it is 10 foot four. So it's, been a, it's a short and stout board, but certainly in my last couple times is good for stability. And now it is time to stand on the Easy Rider. So let's do it. Right now I'm sort of seated on the kayak seat. So it actually gives you a little bit of a nicer, bit of an extra cushion for you as soon as you're about to stand up. You have less of that unstabilization as opposed to going your knees. So let's just stand. Yeah, just like the last time I piled this board, super stable no problem at all no rocking back and forth even me rocking right now definitely feels a lot more like a platform as opposed to something that goes side to side a little bit more like some of the thinner boards i'm not sure how much more stable the low rider will be compared to this so this would be very interesting but yeah Overall stability, this is one of the more stable boards we have tested. Now let's do some tracking. So we're going to shoot for the ramp, see how many strokes aside. So I get a little bit of momentum. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. On the other side here. One, two, three, four, five. Really, I should have stopped at four. So let's just say five strokes aside. It's actually, I think it's about level with what it did the last time. 
The all around average is 5.8 strokes a side. So honestly, the reading is not too bad considering this is a 10 foot four board and it's 36 inches wide. It's actually a pretty decent reading and there's only a single fin too. Let's try a different place here. Reverse 360, Let's see how many we can do. Let's start. Two, three. Yeah, so about 3.5. Did a couple of readings now and we'll say 3.5. Which is still a pretty good score, but I'm not entirely surprised because of the board's width. 36 inches wide. It's a pretty wide board and it's pretty stout, 10 foot four, so makes sense. Next, let's try some reverse side paddles for 360. So let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. That is a really good score as well. Eight reverse side paddles is excellent. It's one of the better scores we've had. So now I'm really curious how the low rider is gonna do. So we did 3.5 reverse side paddles and, or sorry, 3.5 reverse sweep strokes and eight side paddles. Now let's paddle back with a little bit of gusto and just see how the board feels whenever we're doing some of those harder strokes. This won't be a fast board by any means, by the way. I have tested before. It's not a speed demon, but we'll see how it does. Right now, the tide isn't going in too high, too low. So I think the water conditions are about right. Okay, board is actually moving pretty well. Oh, now the wind is against me a little bit, so that's hindering it, but yeah, the last time I tested this board didn't go as fast. Now, mind you, I think I'm actually going with the tide now. It's kind of hard to tell because the wind is blowing one way, tide is sort of going the other, but for the most part, the water conditions are calm. And yeah, you know, this thing actually uh, gave it a bit of juice and it responded fairly well. So the only thing is I have to correct a little bit more each side compared to a thinner all around board. That's like, you know, 32 inches. I did have to do about two strokes aside before I had to correct instead of getting a bit more of momentum where you're doing like five to six strokes a side or something and then you switch. Once again, this isn't Speed Demon board, but didn't do too bad. Now we're gonna try the low rider. All right, welcome aboard the Bot low rider. Now this is the, let's just say the premium version of the rider series. So this is a 10 foot six board. So it's two inches longer, it's 36 inches wide. And it has a few differences to it. For example, one of the things you may notice that has a full deck pad that spans the entire board. In the back, there's diamond groove deck padding, which I think is a pretty nice little touch. There's also some more other accessories like there's little D rings for coolers right at the back. Unfortunately, I'm seated on it because I'm on the kayak seat. But if you were not wanting to have the kayak seat there or you could put it in the middle, you could certainly clip a cooler on. And then there's also slide in rack mounts at the back. So if you're a big fishing enthusiast and you want to make this the ultimate fishing vessel, you can do that as well. So one of my impressions 
in kayak formation is the fact that the board feels a little bit more planted in the water. There is still nose wag, but there's not as much as the bought 10 foot four. So I'm not entirely sure why that would be, but this feels a little more planted in the water. And so as soon as we get through the corner, we're gonna try some kayaking strokes, see how they compare. Okay, so if memory serves me correctly, I think I'm at about the same spot as the last time. The ramp, so let's just do some kayak tracking strokes. So, okay. One, two, three. Okay. A little momentum. One, two, three. Yeah, three strokes aside, kind of very similar to the Easy Rider, 10 foot four. Let's just kind of turn around. Two, three, four. So actually, I feel like this board is less maneuverable compared to the Easy Rider. Now it could be because it's heavier. I'd imagine it's heavier just because of the accessories on here. But it definitely feels a little more planted. So now we're gonna try some paddle boarding stuff. So standing, tracking, maneuverability, and a little bit of a speed test coming up. Now we're gonna do some stability and paddle board formation. So once again, we're kind of perched a bit like a bird. So I'm just gonna go down, there we go. Yeah. I think it's still a little bit more planted than the Bolt Easy Rider, but the difference when standing is very, very minute. Um, of course, just like the Easy Rider, this board is supremely stable. One of the most stable boards we've tested, or it's up there anyway. Yeah, I mean, even paddling this thing this would be great. I think this would be a great pick for a fisherman personally. Like the platform is just so stable. Like I could even kind of walk a little bit like back and forth, you know. One thing I should note is that the paddle is also a little bit different. The Easy Rider is aluminum. Well, this one, it's sort of like a fiberglass slash carbon hybrid kind of paddle. It also has the same grip stuff. Now, I'm not necessarily a big fan of this grip stuff, especially in harder conditions. I found that it gave me a blister in my hand. But if you're just paddling like normal, then, you know, it won't be too big of a deal. But especially with ocean water, ocean water plus the grip of this, I'm not really necessarily a big fan of the feel. I'd rather have something smooth like this kind of material right here. And now we're gonna see how many reverse sweep strokes we can do. Just wanna back up a little bit here on the shore. There we go. So now we're gonna see how many reverse sweep strokes we're gonna do while we're going the other way. All right, let's do it. One, two, Three, four. Yeah, so I think this board doesn't maneuver as well as the Easy Rider 10.4. It's actually pretty interesting. Now we're just gonna do some reverse side paddles as well. So let's do this, just do that now. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, huh, 
one more reverse side paddle. Very interesting. It appears that because, ooh, what did I touch there? Huh. It appears that the Easy Rider is definitely the more maneuverable board. Now, I guess that makes sense in a way that the board is 10 foot four while this is 10 foot six. But still, I wouldn't have thought that two inches would have made that big of a difference. But I think in this case, the thing that makes biggest difference is the weight. I think this is a heavier, more heavy duty board. So that's why it feels a little more planted and it's taking a few more strokes aside to do the 360. All right, I think we're at about where we were with the Easy Rider and paddleboard formation. So now let's do some tracking scores. So once again, heading for the ramp, let's see how many strokes aside. So let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now let's try the other way. And momentum. One, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I would say this would be five strokes aside, just like the Easy Rider. The tracking score isn't really too different. So it's six strokes on one side, four on the other. I just make it an average of five. Um, when, well, there's not too much wind, but I think the tide probably has a little bit to do with that. So I'm just trying to average the score out, but it appears the Easy Rider did the exact same thing. Now we're gonna give this board a little bit of oomph and kind of see how it feels. We're gonna stick closer to the shore so that we don't have as much wind, just like the other board. So let's do it. Okay, just doing some of the speed strokes, I kind of felt like I can do a few more strokes aside, but this board does not feel, it doesn't feel lighter. So what are my overall impressions between the bot low rider and the easy rider? To be honest, between the two, there's not that much to choose between them besides the onboard features which we're gonna cover in another video I feel like the main difference is that this board feels heavier and it's a little bit more planted in the water now the difference isn't exactly night and day it's only a slight difference I can kind of feel because I've paddled a bunch of boards over the past few years so I've kind of started to get a feel of these things. But overall I think if we were to categorize this, you just want to do recreational paddling, kind of fart around on the lake, river, ocean, etc. The Easy Rider is more than good enough, like it still has a lot of accessories on it. It's a very good board. If you have more gear, maybe you wanna go for a little bit of a longer paddle and especially you're fishing or maybe you're even considering doing yoga or you want a dog on board, then I would recommend the Bot Lowrider. Either way, both these boards, supremely stable. They're definitely not for speed. They're not for touring port purposes. I think these are more recreational boards slash boards to be on still water. But yeah, really impressed with them. Just wanted to show some of the differences between the low rider and the easy rider from an in-person perspective. 
because you can't really see these differences when you're on board so might as well just show you right here now something to note the easy rider does come with a kayak seat as well i do want to point that out i just forgot it <laughs> during this test so instead i just used the low rider seat they're the same thing kind of just different color scheme really flip this seat open so you can kind of see so it's very similar it's just a different color scheme to match the easy rider some of the other things you might notice is that the low rider has a full on deck pad so the deck padding goes from front all the way to back the easy rider offers about two-thirds of deck padding with both of them being diamond grooved right at the back here and you can also see that the low rider has bungee deck webbing right at the back while the easy rider does not and you can also see that the low rider has little slide in mounts that's good for the rack hopefully you guys can see it maybe i'll i'll close the seat So there you can see that there's two slide in rack mounts on the low rider. Now those rack mounts are good for any bought board. So you can use things such as the bucket rack, um, their standard fishing rack. They even have a light up rack. They have all kinds of different variations. And at the bottom, you can kind of see there's D rings as well for a cooler. So you could, for example, have that kayak seat in the middle if you just want a kayak and have the cooler right at the back where the seat currently is. I usually like to have the seat towards the back because I want to stand and sit at the same time and that's the best formation to do that. Now it does compromise the performance a little bit on water when you're kayaking, but otherwise this is usually the way I do it. Uh, I like to count most of the performance for paddle boarding anyway, so because I like to stand in the middle. But if that matters to you, just move the seat up. This is Derek from Inflatable Sup Authority. Thank you for watching. If you thought this review was helpful, feel free to subscribe. The product links as well as the reviews are in my bio, so I really appreciate it if you check that out through my bio. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you with more videos. See ya.